You know what I like about you? You're smart, kid, and you move fast. Hey everyone, welcome to DIY in 5, the show where we give you simple tech tips to make your life easier. My name's Trisha Hirschberger, and today we are continuing on our journey to build the ultimate PC, one component at a time. For this episode, we're looking specifically at CPU and RAM. What are they and which type is right for you? Let's get started. The CPU, or central processing unit, is really the brains of your whole system. Oh, this is the brain? You'll see CPUs described in terms of cores, clock speeds, and hyperthreading. None of these are as intimidating as they may seem, and they each refer to different facets of the CPU. Let's start with cores. Back in the pre-times, a CPU only had one core, one central processing unit. So if a processor is described as dual core, that means that there are two central processing units on one CPU chip. More cores mean more processes that can be done at the same time on a single piece of hardware. Think of your CPU as a chef in a restaurant and the number of cores as the number of pans he can have going at the same time. Dual core means he's got two pans and quad core means four and so on. You can see how multitasking is a bonus here. While you may think, wouldn't it be better to have two chefs each with their own pan? Having multiple cores on one CPU means the cores can communicate faster and they each don't need their own power or cooling. Double thumbs up. Two brands reign supreme when it comes to PC CPUs, AMD and Intel. Many people staunchly favor one brand over another, but lately they seem to be pretty neck and neck in terms of performance. Intel's i3, i5, and i7 lines are divided by number of cores, and the chips within each line vary in clock speed. A top of the line A5 might be a better choice for you than an entry level i7. Now, AMD offers a bunch of great processors, many of which are known as APUs, because they combine the CPU and the GPU graphics on one chip, saving you a lot of money if you're building a budget gaming rig. There are countless comparisons online between the latest AMD and Intel processors, so do your homework before you buy. When you hear the term hyperthreading, it sounds really fast and cool, but what does it actually mean? The term hyperthreading dates all the way back to 2002 as one of the first attempts to bring parallel processing to consumer PCs. The CPU acts as if it has more cores than it actually does by speeding up programs via its own logic. Your system will think it's got two CPUs when it really only has one. Does this speed up the system? Absolutely. Is it as fast as having more than one core? Not necessarily. Good news is you don't have to choose between the two. Because nowadays, you can get CPUs with multiple cores and hyperthreading. To see how your system recognizes multiple cores and or hyperthreading in Windows, you can go to Task Manager, Performance, and look toward the left of the screen. Pretty cool. Finally, you'll want to consider clock speed, or the measure of how many clock cycles a CPU can perform per second. This is measured in Hertz. So does a CPU with more gigahertz mean it's a faster processor? Not exactly. If it's the same type of processor, sure, this may be the case. But newer CPUs are often more efficient, meaning more work gets done per clock cycle. You gotta look at the number of cores, the amount of CPU cache memory, features like hyperthreading and overclocking, and of course, read user reviews before you can make the best decision for you. P.S. I know I buzzed by the term overclocking and you may have heard that term thrown around before. That just means you can get more speed than the standard rating on the box, but only if you have the right setup to do so and know how to adjust the settings. That reminds me. Hey Google. Write a DIY episode on overclocking made easy to use in the future. I got you. Okay, now that we've spent most of this episode talking CPUs, let's switch over to RAM or random access memory. If your hard drive acts as your long-term memory, think of RAM like your short-term memory, ready to access frequently used things quickly at a moment's notice. Luckily, we've already done an episode to help you determine how much RAM you need, and you can check that out here. Basically, if you're using your system for rendering, computations, or anything that involves a lot of processing power, you may want more RAM. Today's RAM will be one of two types, DDR3 or DDR4. DDR4 is newer, boasting a greater range of clock speeds, less power consumption, and less latency. Your motherboard and CPU will determine what kind of RAM you get and how much you can actually install. Lastly, you'll need to consider RAM speed, or how fast your RAM can read and write data. 
This really matters if you plan on using CPU integrated graphics. 1600 megahertz is probably fine for most gaming needs. And if you have the option to go for dual channel mode instead of single, meaning two four gigabyte sticks instead of one eight gigabyte stick, then that will give you greater bandwidth. Okay. Phew, I know that was a lot, but we're well on our way to having a fully customized PC built by you. If the info we talked about today helped you, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. If you have a tip to add specifically about CPU or RAM, please leave it in the comments below. Next episode, we'll delve into storage and those super sexy and highly sought after graphics cards. Thank you for watching DIY in 5, and I'll see you next time.